This video is about the uh, me menu system I've put together for the demo or you know for my projects in the past. Um, so the main hook point is the menu set root menu in uh, the main uh, method and my goal with the menu system was to make it as easy and quick as possible to add uh, new menu items and to have a uh, menu hierarchy. Also the menu code automatically lays out um, the screen so you don't worry about the absolute coordinates and you know how, how to structure the menu on the screen so that helps in uh, you know making it faster to add menus. So there's kind of three main scenarios with the main with the menu system and the menu layout and first is just the sub menu structure so you have a top level menu like in this case Frognicate and it has a sub menu and uh, it's defined you know in the same sort of structure. Um, to make these sort of structures you know quick and easy to put together where you can just sort of copy and paste an existing one and you know update it to uh, whatever you want it to be. Um, I've made the menu structures have a sentinel, a null sentinel to detect the uh, the final value so when you're putting your menus together just make sure you add that otherwise there's a chance that the code will just go nuts and uh, you know crash the board. It's probably um, so I, I've mentioned the first scenario um, for the menu system. The second is um, more along the lines of just using a menu item as a button and, and it calling a callback right away and the third is like we saw in the demo the applet one where the applet takes over the screen and you know complete control and then eventually hands um, control back and the way that I've chosen to sort of implement the easy addition of menu items and the configurability of this is uh, array of structures so it's probably a good time to take a look at that structure at the moment. Struct menu so the uh, the first item uh, is the text that's displayed in the menu it always has to be there otherwise um, the entry is considered the sentinel value so it should always have some text to display the, f the following four are optional so they can be null and uh, depends on what you're trying to do but yeah, the second field, the next, that's for the sub menu and the menu hierarchy. So if that's um, not null and you you hit an entry with your finger that has that populated, then the following menu will be displayed. Um, the uh, the other scenario is the sort of menu item as a button, and uh, when this press handler is uh, is populated and the button is pressed then this callback will be run so this can call straight back into your code and the button down uh, argument will be 1 or 0 depending on whether it's pushed or not so for, for push and release um, the other scenario is the applet scenario so it has two two fields that are used they're not grouped together but they probably should be right next to each other because they're used typically at the same time the first is uh, the activate callback and uh, it'll be called with initialize, initializing equals one in the parameters. Um, when you hit the uh, when you hit the menu entry, and with zero when you know the menu system is tearing down your applet, so you have the chance to sort of allocate resources and deallocate resources at that point. Once um, the once you've hit a, a menu item with an activate handler callback, um, the menu system will clear the screen and call your callback and then it will also look to the touch handler as well so from that point on if there's any touch events it will try and send them to your touch handler um, and that will include just the uh, x and y value that was touched the touch handler callback also returns an int, should return an int uh, whenever you turn return zero from your uh, touch handler then the menu system assumes that your applet still active and has consumed the key 
If it returns non-zero, then it assumes your app was done and will repaint the menu. So just keep that in mind. We can see here, um, you know, the 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 first um, use case. The sub menu is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Like I said in the beginning, um, it'll take care of layout. So if you have, I think it's less than than four or four or less menu items, then they'll just be displayed in a single column for width menu. If you have more than four, then the menu system will paint two columns and uh, side by side which we saw in the demo video in the beginning. Um, in the case of the callbacks, they're pretty straightforward. Um, for the demo, we just toggle the lead for the item 1 case when the button is pressed, when the button is down. And in the item 2 callback case, that's when the lead only lights when you're holding the button down. So we just uh, set the lead based on the button state. Uh, the uh, applet case is a bit more interesting, so let's go take a look at that code. So, like I said, when the menu system starts an applet, it assumes it's taking control of the screen, so first thing it does is just uh, clear the screen of the, the menu that was there, and then your code gets a chance to paint whatever it wants. You know, the example applet's pretty uh, pretty boring, pretty simple, it just paints a bit of text, but, uh, you know, if you were doing a real applet, you'd probably have some graphics and maybe some buttons on the screen. Um, the touch handler for this case just updates the screen with the current touch value but the other thing that does is it lets you get out of the applet by uh, returning non-zero whenever you touch in the bottom right hand corner which is you know where I deliberately put the back text so from here you should be able to you know use the skeleton to flesh out your own example applet your own example menu system to do what you want and hook it up to you know, your code that does whatever I.O. and interesting things. Good luck.